G'day fellas, and welcome to game number two of your semi-finals for the Outback Octagon. Spawning in as one of four Delhi players, we've got Crackity here. That is correct. This is absolute Delhi madness right now. We've got four people on the Delhi. We got Don on the Delhi, Marine Lord on the Delhi, Crackity on the Delhi, and Sim Tom all on the Delhi. Let's find out where they spawned. To the east of Crackity, playing as the Chinese. We've got Dinky King, and look how fast that town center is up to town. Two villages down there. He's got a hunt right next to it as well. He's going to be very quick to age up in this game, I suspect. Beautiful. Oh, my Lord. Look at that sacred site as well. He is one happy camper. Down towards the south, though. Playing in as the pink French player. We've got Puppy Paw. Towards his south. Just a little bit further on, we've got Matiz on the teal, playing as the Mongols. Over towards the west of the map. Playing as the Orange Deli, we've got Don Artie. And Symptom towards his north, in the color red, also on the Deli. A lot of Deli in this game, but that ain't it, baby. Towards the north, playing as the French, in the color purple, we've got Vortex. And finally, to his east, playing as the yellow Deli, we've got Marine Lord, Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second semi-final in your Outback Octagon. This is about to get crazy. Four delis. Wham's not even in this game and he's already trading. That's how you know it's about to get serious. Now, the question is... Now, you know, we, we often pose these sort of predictions, these questions when it comes to Twitch. Who, wh where do you think Delhi is going to finish up this game? Now, I, I pose the question, is Delhi going to win this game... I mean, this is going to be tough for all of our Delhi players out there. When you take a look at the the, the sieves that they're up against, we've, we're talking double French, Mongols, and Chinese. These are like these are really good team or really good FFA sieves. In fact, I would say that like uh, unironically, French are insanely good in FFAs just because of the infinite stone that they get. But speaking of that, let's take a look and see. We're right on board with Vortex. He's one of our French players today, and see exactly where those neutral trading posts are. There's plenty of them out. So there's the coastal trading post as well as the normal trading post just here. There's also a trading post a little bit further away and then another coastal trading post. So they're all towards the center of the map, but you can see that they're all going to have different sort of lines that they can go on. Now this map, it's a bit of a hybrid. There are There's water, there's land, there's plenty of action, and there's all there's a lot of fish to be had. Vortex could actually look to get some decent trade, actually. If he went and, and dropped a dock up here and traded down towards this position... That would be pretty decent. I'm not going to lie. And that's that's a very small lake as well. So easy to protect. But Puppy Paul going to be out on the lake here. So Puppy Paul also in the French. So it seems like uh, the, the Delhi players are, are somewhat squished in over on that west side. We do see at this stage that uh, no age up is going to be coming through. It is very early on in this game. But I suspect the first player looking to age up is probably going to be Dinky King. Now remember that we've got extra rules for this uh, for this round, the semifinals. Uh, so we've introduced our first blood rule which means that the first player to eliminate another player will be awarded five extra points in addition to the points for the kill so as an example if we see dinky king walk up over here and drop down a barbican a big bad barbican on top of crackety's face and takes him out he's going to get five points as well as the points for the kill so it's a huge amount of points that you can get and it encourages and promotes that early aggression the idea behind it is that, you know, typically in these games, if you go for early aggression, you're going to get punished. You're going to get hit hard because you're making units when everyone else is building town centers and they're booming. So you're the one getting punished. So let's let's look to try and motivate that a bit, boy. Let's get people out there. Let's get those battering rams down. Let's start seeing people getting taken off to the ranch and thrown in the showers and having a good time. But now up towards the north. <laughs> Jeez, we're getting out early in this one, it seems. We've got the moss coming through for Marine Lord. No way jumps coming through just yet, but uh, you will notice that our uh, our board at the top has been replaced, so we're not actually using uh, our, our UI at the top. We're not using that new UI that we had in the last game because it did go a little bit buggy as soon as players started getting eliminated, and unfortunately in that game, it was quite early. No spoilers, but let's just put it this way. Casper didn't have a very good spawn, uh, but uh, yeah, we, we've reverted back to the old one, so hopefully no problems. Uh, for for this one, but we'll watch it to wait and see how it plays out. I suspect we're going to have battles now. One of the other things to note is that when it comes to um, the when it comes to this game, 
We've also also got in addition to first blood. We've also oh, oh my god, why am I saying ortho? Uh, uh, apologies, guys. Uh, I've, I've I've I don't have a lot of sleep on me right now. I've recently just had my firstborn child uh, come out just a week ago, so still getting back to that whole sleeping thing. We've got bloodbath scoring also in this, which means that for killing an enemy player or eliminating an enemy player, you're going to be getting, instead of three points, you're going to be getting double points. You're going to be getting six. So as an example, you know, we talked about it a bit earlier. If that Barbican comes down, which it is coming down, and Dinky King looks to take out Crackity in the early stages of the, of the game, not only does he get an extra five points uh, from uh, Bloodlast, he, or, or First Blood rather, he also gets an extra three points from that double scoring. So it's, look, it's complicated. All you need to know is the killing people. It's a good thing. You want to be doing it. You just want to make sure that it's in Minecraft. Don't actually do it in the real world. But uh, that, that, that's a reference to the in Minecraft meme that you guys should know about. But uh, anyway, Dinky, he's aggressive. Not not super aggressive though. I, I feel like this, I don't know whether this was placed intentionally. He, he does have scouts out on the map at this stage. So he's going to know about his enemy, but you can see he's working towards that dynasty. Four villages on gold is going to give him enough for it. And I think the question is whether he looks to make a play for Chokunu in age two, or whether he looks to go for a little bit more age three focus. Now, for me, if I'm playing in this matchup for Dinky, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I want to try and go for a, a, a nice quick push, try and take out Crackity as quickly as possible. And then at the same time, behind that work towards a boom. Let's see if he does that. Over towards that west side, though, we are going to be seeing Dome of the Faith drop down for Simtom as well as Dawn. Now, I wonder if these guys are going to be working together. Now, I haven't been watching the chat, but they do know about each other. They know that they're here. And if they start looking to try and fight each other, well, that's going to seal their fate, or at least it'll seal one of their fates. I don't know about the second one, but uh, it, it, it could be smarter for them to look to work together and try and take over the world. At the same time, up towards the north, we've got Vortex very close here to Marine Lord. So maybe there's potential for those two guys to take it out. So just remember, you guys can see the chat over here. I can't actually see it because I'm not using that screen. I'm not using uh, the the uh, the OBS uh, to actually uh, watch the game. I'm just watching it through the in-game functionality. More players adding docks down over towards this position. We already see a pink dock. We see a purple dock. And now we're going to start seeing a dock from Simtom thrown in. Marine Lord going to be dropping down his landmark towards the north. It's going to be that Dome of the Faith Don Artie now with his own landmark. Finishing completion. The age up through for him. Very happy. And he's going to be the second player to reach H2. Have a look how long Dinky has been sitting in age, uh, age 2 for. It, it, it's absolutely wild to me how quickly Dinky gets up to this next stage. It, 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 and it's that, just that bonus of China and why they're so good in these free-for-alls. Because not only in the late game are they the strongest civilization, but in the early game as well, they get a massive head start because of the faster building town centers. So if you get two villages together, you're, you're getting your town center up a good minute before your enemy is getting theirs up. And that just really starts to snowball. And we can now see it coming out in a, in a pretty mean, methodical way. With Dinky King, going to be looking to get out that Chokunu production. We can see he's got the Imperial Academy about to come through. Imperial Officer on standby. But we'll take a look at the uh, at the Sacred Tracker. There are three Sacred Sites. So your first Sacred Site is going to be over here on the eastern side of the map. Second Sacred Site in the center of the map, in the very middle of the map. And third Sacred Site, just a little bit away. So if there's anyone who's going to be winning that Sacred Site victory... It's probably going to be Dinky. <laughs> He's got a really good sacred site position here. We still don't yet... We're still yet to see any Chokunu, but more players are going to be coming through, including Simtom. Now, the question is whether we have aggression from these two guys or whether these guys look to play it out a little bit more... A little bit more fairly. Second town center coming down for Don. It seems like these guys may have had words and said, hey, you go your way, I'll go mine, and uh, we'll call it all fair. Vortex now reaching the feudal age as well. Marine Lord also reaching the feudal age, so all... These guys now reaching feudal. Everybody is in the feudal age. And our score leader breaking away with an early lead. It's going to be Dinky down towards the south playing as the Chinese. A couple of red units in the middle of the map. It's going to be Simtom just doing some scouting out. Walls already coming down as well. Vortex going to be throwing these down, preventing any little passages from opening up and potentially ruining his day. More docks coming out for Puppy Paw. More docks coming out for Simtom. These guys looking to get down to business early in this game. We'll take a look down towards that south side. Our Mongol player still in age one. Hold on. Oh, no. Uh, that uh, I was going to say, that doesn't look like an age one uh, archery range. But uh, he's, he's in age two. It's going to be the silver tree that comes out for him. Now, remember, we talked about it earlier. The four trading posts that exist. Two in the middle. And two, two over here in the middle. So one, two. 
So everything's in the middle, nothing on the side of the map. So it's going to be harder for Matiz to sort of gain control of a trade post. But remember, it's kind of open. It, it is, to be honest, it's pretty damn open. He could look to try and trade towards this and he could get a significant return. We'll check back over in with our Chinese player. It looks like at this point in time, Horsemen are also going to be coming out for Crackety. So he's looking to hold on for a little bit of a defense here. Chokunu are out. Going to be forcing villagers away from the gold vein. He knows that if you control the gold, you control the world. I don't think that's actually the reference. I think it's something to do with spice, but you guys get what I mean. It's, it's from Dune. It's from Dune. Don't worry. But it's uh, over towards the west side. Scout going to get found out from Vortex. Actually getting, getting military bases or military production out already uh, for... Symptom. This isn't a good thing. Now, remember, when it comes to the points for this game, we've already got players that are on a really high amount of points in this game. So the first one's going to be Don Artie. He's sitting on, I think it's close to 63 points. Uh, the other big one, the, the other big dog that you've got in here is Puppy Paw. Uh, that's not Puppy Paw, Puppy Paw down here. Uh, so these guys are players that are almost guaranteed to get through to the grand finals. They basically just got to breeze it through and, you know, not, not get mucked up by anything. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if they become targets because of that, because they're... They represent a very easy uh, way to sort of grab yourself a few quick points. But uh, Dinky now behind this is going to be working towards a battering ram. We see that the siege engineering is going to be coming through. Symptom going to be looking for that age up as well. So going to be going age three. Interestingly, not going for... Oh, this could be bad for Don. We can see the walls coming up as well. This is interesting. He's kind of walled Don in. He said, hey, Don, you, you stay on your side, mate. This is my side. He's now looking to take all of this backspace. This is bad for Don, because remember, Don opens second town center. We see Symptom now looking to go with the compound of the defender. It's going to be in the back of his base as well. Very nice and safe positioning there. Smart moves from him. Already walling up as well on, with the palisades. Palisades, rather. Villagers coming out here for Crackety. Not sure exactly what Crackety's doing, what he's looking for, where he's going with these ones, but has definitely walked a long way from home. All the way to Don's base. We see a town center going to be coming coming down. So perhaps these two guys have gotten on board with each other and said, hey, I'm in trouble. I need a little bit of help. We'll ride on board with Crackety and see what his resources are looking like. Because he's going to have to start thinking about potentially dropping down a, a Castle Age uh, landmark as quickly as possible because he's under threat. And I'll be honest, I don't think there's much holding this position. This is, it almost looks untenable when you've got China who has that advantage in the age up. Can you think about it this way, right? The Chinese player, like you're playing a 1v1 right now, Delhi versus China, but you were on the toilet and you forgot that you were in queue. You get back to your computer, you're 59 seconds through the game and you've just been like, oh, oh, and you sit down and you're like, I don't even know what map this is because it's mega random. But you get the point. That's how far ahead right now Dinky King is and he's going to continue pushing that. It's going to be really hard for Crackety to try and hold that on. All right, well, he is moving villagers, migrating out. And you can see, I think that's probably what his plan is. He's got a lot of villagers here. So it might be a bit of a race against time. And I, I suspect, I, look, I, I'll be honest. I, I suspect that uh, Crackety might even look to get taken out. Relic's getting picked up here from Symptom. We see more players reaching the third age. It's going to be Matiz. A uh, Marine Lord's already up as well. Uh, so Matiz down here in the south side. Uh, still, do we see any traders coming out for Matiz? It doesn't look like it at this point. Step it out, going to be coming out for him. It's going to be the Monastery or Mosque going down. Crackety losing the first building. He did lose this outpost as well. Chokudu numbers looking healthy. Such a difficult composition to fight into in these early stages of the game. But it looks like absolutely everything is being abandoned now for Crackety. And he is fighting for his life. And the, the battering ram numbers are looking pretty good right now. I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is looking concerning for Crackety. He's got three villagers in here. That's going to be the main threat. Uh, or main, main issue from losing this town center. Looks like we've got a sacred site being captured. A lot of scholars moving out across the map. Don Hardy going to be moving out in tandem. Villager just going to be going to be preventing it. Don also reaching the castle age. Relic's looking to get picked up. First town center of the game going to be going down. Dinky King looking to pick up those early points. Remember that in addition to getting the points for the kill here on Crackety, also he has the potential to grab that first blood. Extra couple of points. Villager's going to have to make a bit of a run for it with those archers. Crackety not looking healthy right now. We'll ride on board with Dinky as he continues pushing through and taking out the landmark. Second one going to be coming up. It's that Dome of the Faith. He knows exactly where it is. Looking back on board with Crackety. You can see he's working towards that landmark. It is a race against time right now. And you can see how intent Crackety is on getting that landmark up. Look at, look at that. He is force dropping off 
He's going to have to try and rush this up. There he goes. Force drop. He gets it. 1234. The perfect amount. Combat of the defender. Everybody now to the landmark. He's looking to drop it down in a safe space. We've got it at the top here. It looks like he's going to be able to get it up pretty easily. About 30% through now. Battering Rams are making their way through, though. Fourth and fifth Battering Rams are on this. Down to about 50-60%, but I think the landmark's going to get up. A few seconds sh shot. Like, honestly, look at this. Okay, this one, this goes up. 1552, age 3. And now Crackety is in age 3, Dinky King. Not going to be able to get the kill right here, but going to keep hunting. Going to keep looking. 12 seconds later, and that was a good game for Crackety. He would have gone out there, but he stays alive. The cockroach lives on. And now you can see he is doing the right thing. He is looking to get down a keep and protect himself a little bit longer. That's what it's all about. It is about getting that keep up and protecting himself. But remember, he puts himself in a very difficult position right now because there are two players incredibly close to him. And now Dinky going to be looking for his next target potentially. We see Symptom moving out in this position, going to be getting caught Lancers in the Spearman. But you, you can't help but wonder whether Symptom may potentially have uh, been teamed up with Krakeny and was looking to come out and help him out a bit, potentially. But uh, up towards the north. No battle between these two guys. Vortex and Marine Lord just chilling out for the moment. Down towards the south. Our teal, Matt is, as well as his uh, his pink compatriot, Puppy Paw, uh, just chilling out at the moment as well. So a lot of people chilling. So we've got two people chilling on each corner of the map. Two in the north, two in the west, two in the south. And Crackity just out here looking to take names. So is, is Crackity going to be, or rather is uh, Dinky going to be our Casper of this game? Is he just going to take out everybody? That is the question. Cleans up a, a uh, scholar in the middle of the map. Continues rolling out the battering rams. He knows where he's heading. I don't know whether he spotted this one, but the battering ram going to be going down now as well. He cancels the uh, he cancels the keep. I'm not sure what the okay. He's now putting down the keep again. Battering ram not too far away. He knows exactly where this is. That's a lot. There's a lot of rams out here for Dinky. We're right on board with him. He's gone into the two town centers as well. So this is two TC Song Dynasty behind this. He's looking really good. He's playing this perfectly. Honestly, this is the exact way that you would be playing China in this position. And it just goes to show his prowess. Marine Lord going to be our first player reaching Imperial Age here on the Delhi. He's got a few relics in the bag here. Just a few. Five relics for Marine Lord at the moment. It's not bad, but it's honest work. Dome of the Faith at the backside. Compound of the Defender a little bit further up. And then over towards this east side, he's got the Hussar Academy that has gone down. Towards the base of Crackety, or at least the base, the base uh, of Crackety. I'm, I'm doing that with my little air quotes, you know, like the 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 base. It's not really a base. It's uh, it's it's barely a base. Said <laughs> that. Uh, going to be turning his attention towards this keep. Vortex also reaching the Castle Age Villagers moving forward. He knows how important it is to keep this keep alive. He is trying his best to stay alive, and you can see indeed Simtom looking to try and help out here for his ally. I would assume this might be an ally. Potentially, we've got an alliance here beginning to build between Symptom, Don, Artie, and Crackety here. The earlier Crackety goes out, the more likely it is that alliance will fail. They need to try and keep him alive, and you can see the spears just coming in, sandwiching on both sides. Dinky King taking a 2v1 right now. Villagers as well, looking to try and take out the battering rams. They're going to be able to take out three of the battering rams. Castle Age gets reached by Puppy Paw. Everybody moving on, but the only person moving backwards at this point seems to be Crackety. He's trying to retreat, trying to keep himself alive, but that keep's going to be going down. And now with that, the villagers going to be going down as well, and Dinky King looking very strong in this early stage of the game. We'll ride on board with Don Artie and we'll see how he's doing shortly. But we can see that this is going to be the final landmark here. The first battering ramp is under attack. It is under threat. Beautiful little trades in there for those knights. Keep in mind they've got that plus one ranged armor. So you're going to be doing absolutely nothing to them. He falls back. Only four villagers remain for him. Crackety sitting at the moment on 18 villagers. Things not looking pretty. Eight villagers on gold just chilling out for the moment. Under attack in the main base as well. He is not having a good time. Chokanu looking to work that down. I think it might be a good game. I don't think there's any way Crackety keeps his head above water. Not in this situation. And with that, what appeared to be a bit of an alliance over towards the west side begins to shatter, begins to falter at this early stages of the game. And Crackety, a player who was our lowest pointed player. I think 34.5 points for him. He's going to be taken out early. And with that, going to be handing over a hefty amount of points here to Dinky King. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. The landmark goes down. Dinky King going to be going to be getting the five points for the first blood and six points for the kill.
He's going to be feeling good about himself after that. And not only that, but taking out a direct rival Dinky King in competition here with Crackety to try and secure up one of the final eight positions. And that's going to take him a long way towards it. So there is our first Delhi being taken out. First Delhi player. Wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. No, it is not Wham. It has been taken out. But three remain. Three remain. We've got Don Arty as the Delhi. We've got Symptom as the Delhi. And of course, we've got the one and only Marine Lord as the Delhi towards the north side. Uh, so we got we still got plenty of Delhi left in this game. <laughs> I, I was thinking about throwing up the prediction. You know, will Delhi be placed 8th, 7th, 6th, and 5th in this game? And it's starting to look like it might be. We'll check in around the map and see how players are doing. We've got walls on this south side for Puppy Paw. So if anything, he's a little bit scared of Matiz for the moment. And Matiz with his Khan positioned very carefully, just chilling out. But the question is, where does where does Dinky turn his attention next? Because Puppy Paw sits down there towards the south and it's somewhat open. So is there potential that we've seen a Puppy Paw Dinky King Alliance coming out because he's walled down towards this position? Hasn't really walled towards the north, though to be fair, he knew that his enemy was very focused on Crackety. And now that Crackety's gone, the question's going to be whether he's going to be able to hold that. It looks like for the moment, Dinky might just be heading back towards his base. Towards the middle, Vortex continues to expand, though. Beautiful fishing economy is going for him. And we've got... Oh, I thought I thought that was trade ships. I got I got very hyped for a second. The, the, the prospect of trade coming out this early in the game for ships. And for the French, like, you, you're, you're crazy not to. I, I think if you can put one and two together, Vortex will go to a very early lead in this game. But talking about early leads and scores at the moment, it seems like our score leader, Marine Lord, popping off a little bit over towards this eastern side. He's going to be getting down plenty of, uh, of buildings and looking to try and get out all those upgrades as quickly as he can. We'll ride on board with him and see how he's doing. 12 scholars at the moment that are garrisoned inside his mosque. So he is researching all the things. No walls between these two players, which would make me think that there may be indeed a little bit of a gentleman's agreement. And I guess one of the things that I that I would be thinking about because a lot of you guys might be looking at this and being like, okay, now I, I, I'll be honest, I, I haven't read the chat that is over over here that you guys can see. So I don't know this, but I, I would imagine like if, if I'm coming into this and it's like uh, this game and let's say I'm Don Arty and I mess and I, I say, hey, Symptom, do you want to be in Alliance? And he's like, yeah, let's do it. One of the things I would say is like, hey, try, let's try and go on the west side of the map. Like if possible, try and, and go towards the west side of the map. If you've got a villager on the west side, look to try and build your town center with that villager. Don't go on the east side. Don't go to the south, the north. Try and go on the west side as much as possible. And there, from there, we can build our base. Like that, that is the kind of level of thinking I would expect to see out of these guys. And as a result, you can see that we've got what appears to be an alliance over here between these two west guys and towards these two north guys, and to an extent, between these two south guys as well. I mean, th there is a wall between them, but uh, it, it, we don't see much attacking coming out just yet. Sacred Sight's now getting taken in the middle. It's going to be Matthias that looks to take them as well. Bit of an expansion out for Don. Beautiful little Palace of the Sultan. Look at this. Oh, but you've got to be so scared. You know what? Never mind. I'm not scared at all. Or am I? No, nah, he'll be fine. Very, very cheeky for Don, though. I do like this positioning. Super, super smart for him. This Palace of the Sultan is going to guarantee his longevity in the late game, make it a little bit harder if he's attacked from the north to be killed off. Makes a lot of sense. But we see that second sacred site being captured in the middle. It's going to be Matiz taking that one away as well. And now a keep in the center. Looks to solidify the position here on the trading posts. Do we see any traders coming out just yet? We'll take a look and see. Nothing here. Nothing over here. Nothing in the middle at this point. So no traders just yet. Wham would be disappointed. But we do see an age three coming through for Dinky King. He's actually going to be heading towards... Uh, is, that, is that his second age three landmark? I'm not actually sure. Oh my lord, look at that. That's that's beautiful. That's the stuff right there. You can, you can tell Dinky King's played played a little bit of Sim City in his time. But uh, I, I guess the, the question is what Dinky looks to do from here. He's, got, he's on three, four TCs, China. Ooh, okay, Dinky's looking really good. You know, one of the things we talked about in the last game that Snooper played is that in the late game, it looked like he was lacking a little bit of that economic oomph, but it definitely doesn't seem to be the case at the moment. Symptom moving down the map. Looks like we may have a little bit of a little bit of a position coming in here. You can see Symptom going to be moving down towards Don Artie's keep. Going to be careful. But I suspect these guys might be looking to secure more resources. That could be an option. More villagers out here. A lot of villagers out here for Symptom right now. Expanding onto the map, but I suspect going to be looking to drop down some keeps. We'll ride on board with him and see exactly how he's doing. 800 stone in the bank. He's thinking about an age up as well. Losing a couple of villagers to that keep. 
And things are looking pretty right now. How, how big is this alliance? How big does it grow? Because Matt is down in the south side. It's starting to look worrisome for him. I mean, he's holding on, but you can see he's definitely... I mean, I, I don't even think he realizes how close death is at this point. Villagers just marching their way down. Hold on. It, is, is this an alliance or is this a tea party? Because right now these villagers... Wait, is Simton building his landmark in this corner? Is, is there like a super alliance going on right now? This is wild. Are you telling me that we've got Matiz, Don Artie, Simtom, and Crackety all in an alliance? Those villagers make it through. He gets to the back of the base. And the keep that came down over here that I thought was initially here for posturing purposes, maybe just here to defend the gold. Not a lot of action in the middle of the map. Just chilling for the moment. He's looking for a position to throw this landmark down. And look at that. Matis moves away. Allows the landmark to go down. Is Puppy Paw in on this as well? Symptom in? Is this the biggest alliance we've ever seen? Uh, is, is, it, is everybody just like playing PvE at this? Oh god. Okay, Vortex is not playing PvE. Vortex is very serious about killing someone. <laughs> but I... I Oh, oh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Uh, Marine Lord, he, uh, he he found out that Dinky King was trading and he's like, well, I'm sorry, Dinky King, but I just can't allow it. At least I think he, I think he was trading. But uh, it, it seems like Marine Lord's picked a target. First landmark going to be going down. It's that Imperial Palace. Over towards the, the west side. I, I was starting to worry here for, for Matis. I'm like, oh no, Matis. This isn't good for Matis. Matis is going to go down. And then it's like the villagers, instead of building the keep on the front side of the base, they walk through the base and build the landmark at the back. I never saw it coming. And now Dinky moving forward with the villagers. Comes in for a bit of a villager snipe. Villagers on 1.29 movement speed. Doesn't have that Yuan Dynasty just yet. Elephants, unfortunately, getting a little bit ahead of the pack. We see Symptom... Symptom's landmark's going down. Oh my god, there's a huge snipe! We talked about it a bit earlier. Symptom might potentially lose his landmarks right now. It's going to be that main town center that's under attack for the moment. But keep in mind, even if they go down, he is prepared. He is prepared. The Hisar Academy sits in the back of the base. And even if he loses two landmarks, even if he loses three, you don't care. Honey Badger does not care, my friends. He just continues rolling on because he's got that landmark in the back of his base, but... Wallalol's gonna be coming down over on this west side. Looking to try and take a few horsemen. Manages to snag one. Good little snag. More landmarks going down. It's that final landmark. We'll ride on board and see exactly how many he's got. Two landmarks remain. Another landmark in the back of the base was taken down. It's that compound of the defender. You can see Vortex capable of finding everything. And you can see, like, we've got... Almost the, these two players from the north mimicking their plays on both respective sides. Isn't this somewhat beautiful that you've got these two guys towards the north that do not attack each other, yet they do not attack enemies together. They are going their separate ways. You've got Marine Lord who's like, I'm going to go kill the Chinese player. You go kill that guy. And that's exactly what they do. Landmarks now coming down safely. Dinky King dropping a landmark in the base of Puppy Paw, confirming our suspicions that there was indeed a little bit of an alliance down towards that that uh, south side. So we, we know for a fact that we had two and one, two, three, four. And then we've got two. So I think everybody in this game has been in an alliance of sorts. Unfortunately for Crackety, it just seems like a, that his alliance may have been left to the last minute. Uh, and similarly to his base, it was taken out very, very quickly. Now, one of the other things to note is one thing that we saw from Marine Lord in the game where he played up against Don, Artie, and Wham, where Wham was trading like a madman and Wham dropped. Marine Lord refused to attack another player while they were getting attacked. He said, no, it is not honorable. I will only fight you guys one versus one. I will not fight a 2v1. I will not fight a 3v1. And he sat in his base and he AFK'd until the end of the game. And I think that's part of the reason why with this alliance, he's done the same thing here. So obviously realizing, you know, money's on the line. He still sticks to his ethics. So we've got an incredibly ethical gamer here. Crossbow's looking good at the moment. I love these yellow elephants. I, I tell you what, I can't wait for the next, uh, the next season to drop so we can start picking our colors and get some yellow elephants out here. These guys look amazing. But now in the back of the base, raids coming down. 
Symptom. I don't know what Symptom's doing. Is raiding his... Is he raiding his ally? I don't know what, what happened there. How those guys got through. Landmarks being rebuilt. Cleanup has happened at this point in time. Transport ships. Wouldn't you love just a little bridge through here? Wouldn't it be so nice? Life could be a dream. Central position in the middle uh, middle of the map. Royal Knights, as well as those Abla trees, posturing for Puppy Paw. Looking to take away a sacred site. Look at the production that's coming out from Marine Lord, though. Huge amount of production here. Now, remember when it comes to the Delhi, there's nothing special about their late game, except for these elephants. That's really about it. Everything else is just kind of meh. There's nothing really going on for it. We'll check the landmark tracker and see how many we got. We got Dinky King with one landmark remaining. Ladies and gentlemen, your Chinese player. Some would consider the favorite in this game with one landmark remaining. And it is that Great Wall Gatehouse. That is going to be his final landmark. And the question is whether Marine Lord finds it. Whether he keeps moving on. Whether he says, you know what? We're going to... Do we do burn down all the production in the base here? Do we leave it? Do we keep looking for that last landmark? But now we've got a bit of a run through coming through once again. He's coming for Symptom. He was, up, he was towards Symptom on that north side. And now you can see Vortex going to spot out that Hisar Academy. He knows where it's at. And he's like, oh, that is a long way. Yeah, mate. That's a long way. Look at your base. Look at that Hisar Academy. There's no way you're getting to that. I don't even know how you go about getting in there. And the spearmen actually defend it. So the spearmen from Matiz defend the raid that was on Symptom on this position. Horsemen once again getting cleaned up. We'll take a look back towards the base of Dinky. Marine Lord definitely intent on taking out people. Outpost coming down here as well. He's, he's looking to try and scout it out. Still that Great Wall Gatehouse stands strong. He's going to need to go through Puppy Paw if he wants to take out Dinky. But uh, Marine Lord realizes that now is the time for him to really begin attacking. Symptom slowly getting his upgrades through. Looking to rebuild on this south side as well. Don just chilling out for the moment. Huge army for... Look at the scholars from Don Ardy. Oh, he has 27 scholars. This is the most educated man in the world. Oh, my lord. <laughs> this is the stuff that dreams are made. This is Beastie Cutie's not largest nightmare. When Beastie talks about Delhi, he's like, ah... Uh, it's impossible to stop them when they get these huge amounts of elephants and huge amount of, of scholars. And everybody says back to him, well, Beastie, you just got to stop them from getting there. <laughs> and it's like, bro, there's four, there's four Delhi players. How do I stop them? Well, I think we're about to see the legend of Don Arty right now because this is a man on a mission. A lot of uh, a lot of healing units out here. I wouldn't be surprised if we see villagers pulled as well. But he's got absolutely no stone in the bank. So that's going to be a consideration as to whether he looks to drop down keeps. But plenty of resources, though, for him to work with. He might be thinking about making mogul moves over on the other side of the map. So we'll watch to see how he plays it. He is heading out of the base and chasing away those forces of Marine Lord. And you can really start to see the battle lines getting drawn here. Obviously, we've got one alliance over on this west side that is slowly but steadily getting stronger. An alliance down towards the south side. Puppy Paw really just chilling out in the middle. I, I don't actually know what Puppy Paw is up to at this point in time. He's maxed out 136 vils, 64 military. But I don't see the military at all. Is he on the offensive? Oh, my mistake. He's on the offensive. And not only that, but he's, he's actually pushing into Marine Lord's base quite deeply. Uh, so apologies for not being able to see that. Marine Lord really... Uh, is is he's on the i mean they, they say the best offense is a good defense but it seems like the best defense might be a good offense you come into marine lord's base you force him back away from this and now all of a sudden he's not going to attack into your base and that's exactly what we've seen we don't see any marine lord units down here but you know what we do see puppy paw is trading taking a little bit of inspiration out of his brother's book puppy paw looks to begin trading Scholars looking out here as well. Look at the bombard numbers for Don. Don going with the Dream Delhi composition right now. The most educated man in the world. Scholarly love. Look at these bad boys as they move ahead. Yay! Fuck that deer, Don! <laughs> oh <my. laughs> Did you see that deer? Poor deer. North push still continuing. And so I think the question is, where does Don go? 
Is, wait, is Don in an alliance with Vortex and Marine Lord? This whole time was Don playing like, oh my God. Could you imagine if Don was playing the long game? If he was in, a, imagine if Don Artie was in an alliance with these two guys at the top. And at the start of the game, he's like, hey, Symptom, do you want an alliance? Like, let's team up. We're next to each other. And then it, it, it's like, he actually just goes, kills everybody. Then kills Symptom. Damn, dude. I don't know how Don does it. His head is the size of a walnut, but his brain is the size of a watermelon. If you see this guy, it's crazy. But now, pushing forward. Looks like Marine Lord going to be under attack on that front. Down towards the south. There's still battering rams down here. A little bit of a push coming through. Now, uh, something that a lot of people might not realize is that Dinky King's landmark here can only be killed by Siege. You can see all, all the, all the uh, cavalry around here looking to try and take this down. They can't. They can't take it down. There's nothing that will take this down other than Siege. You must use Siege to kill it. And now Don walks through the base of the Chinese player. He actually spots out the Bombard from Marine Lord. He's like, well, I've come, I've come all the way across the map for this. <laughs> and he one-shots the Imperial Palace. All right, Don looking to try and take out names early, it seems. This is an expensive army right here for Don Arty. I'm not going to lie to you guys. This is one of the most cost-effective armies or, or population-effective armies that you can get. If we were just going to calculate this, let, let's, let's do the math of this up against a Spearman. So each one of these units costs a thousand resources, okay? A thousand resources for each one of these units. And we've got... How many Bombards have we got here? 14 Bombards, 14 Elephants. So 28. 28 times 3. And you're looking at what? What's that? 42? Oh, hold on. 22. Uh, so, yeah. 80, 84. 84 population. And that's incredibly effective, expensive population. 333 resources per population point. Very, very nice. But now, hold on. Where's Don going? Where's the elephant man going? Donati just on, on, a, on a mission over towards this east side. He's looking to bring freedom over towards the east side of the map. He's like, you know what? I've taken the west, and now I will take the east. And he, he seems like he's got no real intent. Hassar Academy still alive down towards the south. Great wall gatehouse. Still chilling out. Vortex just on, the, on this front, just hanging out for the moment. No one really seeming to make any progress except for Don. He's coming around the walls. He, wait, does he not like Dinky King? Is that what's happening? But Dinky's got... Oh, Dinky's got a wonder. A, a, a landmark, rather. Up in this corner. But the question is, does Don not know that this Great Wall Gatehouse is down here? We see the Royal Cannon is here as well. Looking to defend. He's beginning to push out. I wonder what it was that set Don off. Why did Don, a man with the, the highest level of education in the world, a man, a, a scholarly man with 26 scholars, why did he come over here and look to take this position out? What did his sources tell him? What, who whispered in Don's ear and said, Don, take the slowest army in the game and march it all the way across the map, will ya? Thanks. And he does it. Sacred sites at this time, held by Dinky, held, at, held by Matthews. And there is another one that's, that's passive at the moment. Step it out in the middle of the map. Going to get cleaned up for the moment. It's going to be Matthias losing that one. Vortex all over this map. Just looking to clean it up. Dinky's King Landmark goes down over in the corner. At the same time, we see Matthias losing landmarks. It, it was that, that landmark that we, we actually just watched go down. I apologize. But now Don heads away from the party. He's like, well, we came to the party. Did he? He picked up a relic in there as well? I like that he's just adding to his army. You know, typically as an army continues fighting, it gets weaker, but Don's get stronger. Don making a bit of a mistake here. Grouping his scholars with his bombards. Okay, there we go. You can see that it, it, it's a terrible bug. I don't know why it occurs. It is one of the silliest bugs in the game. Do not, do not uh, drag box your units at all. Always want to have them grouped up independently and then moving them independently. Otherwise, they will not move at full speed really really frustrating bug but now pushing forward he's heading towards marine lord's base now when it comes to marine lord's base hussar academy as well as his other three landmarks positioned safely he's got them the the stone walls up around that back landmark but there's no reason why he can't march through this base and look to take it out there are so many bombards here i wouldn't be surprised can he one shot that let me just do the math here 200 540 and he's got 14 bombards 540 yeah, it, it, ooh, ooh, it's gonna be close. I think he, he I think he one shots it just. Horseman now moving down. 
towards that south side. A lot of spearmen here for Matiz. Matiz definitely seeming to just be playing it safe at the moment, not really making moves at this point. Emplacement coming up on the south side as well. Going to be starting to attack, and Don Artie going to be looking to cause some havoc. But look, Don not attacking Marine Lord. Don is not attacking Marine Lord. He's even leaving this keep up. So it, it starts to uh, you start to beg the question, you know, is Don in that alliance? Where does he go from here? Oh no, maybe he's not. The question is still yet unanswered. Towards the north side, Simtom walling himself in. Just like the Chinese, preventing those raids coming through from the Mongols. Not really the Mongols. Uh, you guys get the idea. And now it's going to be elephant v elephant. They said it would never happen, but it's happening. But he goes separate ways. Marine Lord doesn't at all seem concerned about this mass. But now he should be. Because they've turned their attention towards the base. And now you can see he's heading with intent. Elephant's going to be coming through. Don Arnie got to be careful. He's got a healthy army here, but no villagers to repair these, these bombards up. Don just, just hanging out for the moment. He's still yet to shoot anything. Oh, never mind. It's going to be a keep that goes down. Don setting up camp in the center. Attack going to be coming through. Bombard's going to be careful. They're heading onto the front line. Needs to pull these scholars out back. Look at this. Don, get your education out and start healing. Healers all of a sudden going to be looking to try and loop in. He's managing to fall back away from this position, but going to be losing bombards. Needs to try and keep them alive. It's going to be the key source here to this push of these bombards and keeping them alive. The elephant's going to be able to tank up the damage. The scholar's not doing a decent job. And ideally, Don just losing a lot of tempo right there. Four or five bombards going down. Plenty of bombards back there as well for Marine Lord at this point in time. But we'll have to wait and see how he plays it. As I suspect, Don might even get cleaned up here. He's got a, a very scholarly army, but unfortunately doesn't seem to have a... What is he doing? Where is Don going? <laughs> Marine Lord even saying in the chat, what are you doing? He's got no idea what he's doing. I've got no idea what he's doing. Is he going for some kind of snipe? He's trying his best. He walks past the Hussar Academy, though. I've got... This, this is either a 900 IQ play or, or just something something else completely. But it's starting... The longer this game goes on, the longer this push goes on, the less and less it feels like a 900 IQ play and the more it looks like a 9 IQ play. What are you doing, Donati? Oh, oh, apparently this is the classic Don Arty scouting move. Don always likes to scout with his bombards, uh, and so looks to do that here. Don slowly but steadily losing all the bombards. Don Arty! Don Arty scouting with the, the most expensive army. Don, you could have used a single scout to scout, but instead sends the entire elephants. What is Don? <laughs> <laughs> the most educated man in the world may not always be the most intelligent. Don Arty proving that here today for us. Putting on a show. <laughs> what is Don doing? He took us on a ride right there. <laughs> Don Arty saying in the chat, I didn't want to attack you. So, I don't know exactly what happened there, but Don, he, he looks like... Uh, he look. <laughs> I, don't, I got no idea. I got I got no clue. I'm sorry. I can't provide any more insight than what uh, than than Don is a little bit special. Let's just leave it at that. Great Wall Gatehouse towards this south side was under attack. I didn't actually see what was attacking it or where those attacks came from. But we'll check in with Dinky. We can see he's actually up to a second landmark now, so he's looked to rebuild. It's going to be that astronomical clock tower back in the corner. So looking to get back that position. Still seven players remain in this game. Players trading out on the map now quite endlessly. We haven't seen much progress being made at this point. And I think part of the reason why you don't really see progress being made is that with larger alliances like this, we start seeing landmark sharing. Where you've got, you know, the Simtom sharing his landmark in the base here with Matiz. So if you ever want to take out Simtom, you're going to have to take out Matiz as well. So it kind of turns into a bit of a team game in that regard. And now Elite Lancer's moving through. And the question is, who blinks first? Are we going to potentially see some French trade coming out strong? We can see Puppy Paw doing all the right moves in the middle. But now the trader continues making his way. Only 147 coming through for the first one. 132 for the second one. And Marine Lord looking to come into the middle and take out names. He's beginning to expand his sphere of influence out across the map. And beginning to push down towards that south side. 
at this point. Everything just chilling out for the moment. We don't see any real snipes coming through, even though there's definitely the potential for it. When it comes to the, the possibility of a wonder, you might be able to see one up here, actually. It wouldn't be terrible. Vortex's landmark gets destroyed uh, by a red player? Okay, it's going to be that College of Artillery that goes down to the Zebek. So Symptom taking it down a little bit over on this uh, on this ocean side. Manages to take it out. And beautiful ships, these Zebeks. But very rare that we get to see them. But they are a gorgeous looking ship, aren't they? Very nimble looking. Very swift looking. Like they'd go straight through the middle of the map. Marine Lord targeting down the gold mine there. I don't know whether that was intentional. Focusing down the mining camp specifically. Maybe just, maybe just helping him out a little bit there. And he begins to move across the map. Ignoring Puppy Paw for the moment. And over towards the west. Everybody just on standby at the moment. I'm scratching my head wondering where these players go to next. And it looks like Marine Lord is going to be the one that pulls the pin. And he says, we're going to take down Puppy Paw. That's the direction we're going to go. You got to remember for Marine Lord, if he takes out Puppy Paw, it's kind of a two for one. Because he's already taken out all those landmarks of Dinkies. And so if he's able to take out Puppy Paw, he can take out Dinkies' final landmark. Obviously, he's still got to work towards this one as well. And then he can cause some serious havoc. Pick up those points and guarantee his spot in that, that top level for the, for the Grand Finals. Landing up towards the north is going to be Simtom. He's got a scout out ahead of the times as well. Elite Lancers now going to be making their way through. Don's still chilling on zero gold for the moment. Not interested in trading. Not interested in gold. He's a man of trash. A trash man, if you will. A garbage man, perhaps. Scouts coming out through, through the base here for Simtom. The landing has occurred. He's gained control of this water. He's got a pretty decent chunk of the map. I'm not going to lie. Simtom looking good at this point. I like the way that he's playing. But I guess my question is, is who's got the stone? As now the town center is going to be the main town center that goes down. I'm going to cycle through these players and see who's got the stone. Vortex on 5k. Yeah, four, 5k seems to be about the most. It's going to be Vortex with it as well. Under attack up towards the north. Keep in mind, he's got plenty of traders out, but... This isn't good. This is going to be the second landmark that goes down. He's walling in the last landmark incredibly quickly. He knows how important it is to get this down. And this could be a problem, right? Because it's right on the edge here. So the Zebex would be able to shoot through it. I don't know where the Zebex went. They may have gone down to... What did they go down to? I'm not quite sure. Vortex going to be looking to try and push this back, though. School of Cavalry going to be going down here. At the same time, another push going to be coming down. Marine Lord once again. And this is the consequence of these cockroaches. You know, they, they crawl underneath the fridge and they stay there for 30 minutes and you don't wait them out. And then they, after 31 minutes, they move back out and then they repair their landmark and they get back up. You got to stay there with the thong. At least that's what we call it in Australia. You guys would know it as a flip-flop. You got to stay where, stay there with the flip-flop. You got to wait for it to come out and bam! Hit him! So I guess the question is like, is is this the biggest alliance that we've ever seen? Right now, we've got Simtom, Don Artie, Crackity, who passed away, Matis, who are definitely in an alliance, and Matis is not making any moves towards Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw wasn't making any moves towards Dinky. The only action that we've really seen has been Dinky on Crackity. Actually, Dinky on Crackity. Maybe, maybe there's like, in these late game scenarios... Oh my god. It's disgustingly good. It is in- Look at this dude. Infinite wood coming in right now for Puppy Paw. Pog, dude. This is amazing. This- For anybody wondering, how do you get invited to Red Bull Walla Lol? It's mogul moves like this. This is just next level stuff. Look at this. He's got- And not, not just one trader. He's got four of these guys out here doing this. This is insane. This is crazy good. Such a smart move from him. Continuing to chase, <laughs> continuing to chase away those uh, those lances up towards the north. They're doing a decent job with the trash horsemen at cleaning them up. 
Guildhall survives. All right, we'll check in on the base of Marine Lord and see how he's doing. Everything looking fine for him at the moment. Marine Lord still looking to apply pressure. You got to remember that he's under attack. Over here from Dinky King. Dinky King. Looking to try and defend onto the, towards that position. On the south side. Dinky King's landmark has gone down. Don Artie's veteran horseman coming out once again. Don doing what Don Artie does best. And not upgrading his Delhi units to Imperial. Because it takes too damn long. Cleanup has happened though. Landmark has been repaired. It's the College of Artillery, but Simtom going for a big landing here. I love the aggression coming out from Simtom here. This is beautiful. Veteran, veteran horsemen continuing to harass the base. Dinky King's landmark going up in the north. Now, actually, Dinky King's landmark over towards the, the east, rather, are going down. That's so confusing, the yellow. So the ye yellow player kills the... Okay, it, it's it, you'd think I'd have it after the, all these weeks. Horseman numbers looking pretty healthy right now for Vortex. Not gonna lie. There doesn't really seem to be that breakaway player. You know, normally there's like a breakaway player that's passive, doesn't really do much. I mean, Mattis has definitely been passive, but he's not breaking away. What, what, what are Mattis' resources looking like at the moment? Not terrible. So he's doing all right, but he's got a big army, but he's just not doing much with it. That's the thing. He's just chilling. And now Don actually heading towards the base. There's a chop through down here. I'm 99% sure that's a chop through. Oh, my lord. You hear the bass coming through from the, the hooves of those horsemen. Turn it up, baby. All right, up towards the north, another run through coming through. It's going to be those bombards or royal cannons, rather, taken out by the vort, by the uh, elite royal or elite knights, rather. The little forward base does get cleaned up. Bombard going to be able to take out these units. We see no Zebex on the ocean at the moment. Still going strong. Still going strong. The hero for today's game. Definitely going to be these bad guys. Elephant's making a little bit of a backdoor attendance. Marine Lord might have Dinky on the ropes. We'll ride on board with Dinky and see how he's doing. 73 villagers at the moment for him. Once again, moving up. Oh my lord, did you see how much that stone costs? It's not that expensive. Puts down another town center. And this is a common theme. A common theme that we've seen in this game is that Marine Lord comes up here, he kills this landmark, and he leaves the rest of the the Chinese base. And as a result, it just gets rebuilt. And he never has to really worry. Don Artie. Where does he go? What does he do? Why is he heading towards his neighbor, Simtom? Excuse me. I just I just burped there. That just, just came up naturally. I'm just sitting here at the mic like, where, where are they going? What are they doing? And it was like, burp. Apologies. Sorry. <laughs> you didn't need to hear that. Puppy Paul going to be looking to clean up these Marine Lord Tower Elephants. No progress being made just yet. I think the question is, you know, who blinks when it comes to wonders? Now, we saw Vortex was definitely in a position to go for one. But even then, you know, he's not really run away. You know, typically when you look at players that are successful... Oh, oh, oh the demo ships! All oh, the demo ships! Uh, the demo ships. Demos in 2022? Cringe. Uh, I, I, I don't... I, I'm pretty confident that the, the demo ship blew up on the fish and it didn't even, like... The fish is still fine. Like, that's the level that these demos are at right now. They don't do anything. They tickle you on a good day. Working towards those raids coming through. Still not a lot of success. Guildhall looking safe and sound at the moment. 3,000 stone in that bad boy. Cleanup crew coming in. It's in the base of, of Dinky at this point in time. I want to check in with Don and see how he's doing. Just chilling out for the moment. Don just really biding his time. He, I feel like Don doesn't know who to attack. I don't even know where Don's army is right now. Same time, going to be coming through the front door, working his way towards this. You would think when we've got, you know, we, when you've got so many points on the line, that people would be looking to kill themselves, or kill themselves, <laughs> would be looking to kill each other a little bit more than what, the, what we're seeing today. But we're 55 minutes into this game, and only one person has gone down. We now see Dinky King losing another landmark. 
I'm suspecting it's not this one, but this one's down to 3,500 health. It's going to be Marine Lord taking it out as well. It's got plenty, plenty of units around. And once again, for the 14th time in this game, Marine Lord heads to this top corner. If he just come through and taken it out of the town centers and all of the villages here. Oh, oh, pause champ. Okay, no, we're fine. We're fine. I always get concerned when I see that. Marine Lord looking... <laughs> Dinky King with the bow chan in the pond. He sails it across. I like it. Th th these are the sorts of big brain moves that we need in these times. The single bow chan in the pond. The alpha dog. One pond. It <laughs> what is it? Two ponds, one bow chan? That that's, that's probably got to be the thumbnail right there, right? Okay, oh, we, we got movement. We got movement on this south side. We got Simtom. We got Donati. We got Matiz. These guys are moving, but the question is, what are they doing? Where are they going? We got three armies all doing defensive maneuvers around each other. Being very careful here. Look at the alliance. There's not even a landmark build, and Dinky King's landmark does go down. It's going to be that one over in the east of the corner. Again, let's see if Marine Lord learns his lesson this time around. It seems like, for the moment, most of the villagers here have been killed. But it seems Symptom, Don, Artie, and Matiz have woken up, and they've said, Puppy Paw, we're coming for you, mate. And do they look to now sweep around the map and take down everybody? Symptom with a little bit of a base down towards his south side is going to begin breaking through the walls. Puppy Paw may have bided his time a little bit too long. Bided his time? Is that, is that the correct term? He, might, he may have bid his time uh, a little bit too long. There's a... The, the, the first time I was introduced to the word bide was in Pokemon. And I never understood it. You wait a turn and then you attack. But it's a powerful attack. And that's the idea behind it, right? Like you, you bide your time and then you boom, baby. But on this south side, now the push going to be coming through. Puppy Paw going to be under attack. Simtom going to be coming through. It's the first decent-sized battle we've seen between these two players. Simtom over on that west side. Going to be losing his bombards on the back. You can see a pretty solid defense coming in from Puppy Paw. It's going to be absolutely no problem for him to clean this up. But keep in mind, towards the north, there were more units posturing. We saw Vortex. We saw Don Artie also there. But he says, you know what? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna let you guys do it. We're going to let you guys do it the 1v1. mono e mono the old-fashioned way. Marine Lord still still hunting for those bloody landmarks. This, this game has literally been the story of Ma Marine Lord trying to find all the Chinese landmarks. It, it's like whack-a-mole at the moment. Like, he, he just... He, he hits down a landmark and three more pop up. He hits down another one, two more pop up. And he can never hit them all because they just keep popping back up. Landmark tracker at the moment indicates that there is one that remains for Dinky. It is going to be that single Great Wall Gatehouse. A little bit of a push coming out. Simtom going to be falling back from this position. Going to be losing all of the bombards. And with that, the potential for a forward base gets taken out. Uh, which is a good thing for Puppy Paw. If he's able to take out the, the forward base, stop a lot of those siege reinforcements, that's going to be huge for him in the late game. If we if we make it there. I say if we make it there because there's always the potential for, for players to make a, a wonder. Oh, my Lord. I like these market placements. I really like the, the way he's got the walls set up here as well. If there's anyone who's in a position to drop a wonder, you'd probably say it's Marine Lord. He's got a lot of space up here between him and his enemies. Also makes it very hard for them to attack through choke points like this, through this. There's not a lot of room for to move. Battle continues to rage. You hear it around the map down towards that south side. As it looks like Matiz has actually gotten out of bed today. I don't know where those bombard sounds are going off, but there they are. We found them. Oh my lord, look at the cannons coming out right now for Puppy Paw. Six cannons, six royal cannons. Horsemen running in. No screens really today for these royal cannons. The knight's going to be trying to do their best to stop it instead. Holding the wall, going to get forced back. Dinky King, 3,500 health away from being knocked out. He's still sitting on one landmark at this point in time. Dinky King, not looking the prettiest. Wait, it, it, I'm clicking on his villages and it's taking me... 
That was that was weird. It's like ghost villages for Dinky King. He was taking me to that landmark. Nice little push coming out. Puppy Paul looking to get a surround. Let's see if he can get a good pinch in here. Gets the charge. He's heading through to the front. He gets the he gets the surround. Gets some pretty decent sweeps in. Scholars have got to stop. They've got to start healing. These elephants will go down if he doesn't. Manages to take out one. Spots a second. Elephants beginning to fall. That's the third one. Marine Lord being forced back. Puppy Paw holding on. 2v1. On the top side, up against Marine Lord. On the south side, up against Matiz. He pushed him away. But left him alone. Attacks all coming down for plenty for Dinky. We're right on board with Don, who's got a little bit more of a silent style of play. Just chilling out for the moment as we enter into the second hour of this game. Great Wall Gatehouse still stands. Hisar Academy still stands. Don Artie's army still stands. 126 elite horsemen. Where does he go with these, I wonder? Landmark in the middle for Matiz. Spreading himself out a little bit. It's smart. I like it. Siege numbers looking healthy for him as well. But now things are definitely starting to get spiced up. We still don't see that, that landmark falling. So Dinky is holding on. And th this is this is where it comes into that whole concept of, of feedback and, you know, working in what we see in these games and, and look how we could try and make it more exciting. We, we tried to make it a bit more exciting with the concept of bloodbath uh, scoring that you would have players who would... Yo. This is next level trading. Oh, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. There can only be one. There can only be one superior trader. But yeah, es essentially we, we like to work in any of the feedback that we get. We do it quite, uh, quite, uh, what's the word? Very quickly. So I'm curious what you guys think, you know. Y are there changes that could be made for the finals to see play like this avoid, avoid, uh, uh, oh gosh, what am I even trying to say? Am I, am I having a stroke right now? I hope not. Ideally, we, we want to avoid pa passive play style. We want to reward people for being aggressive. But it can be hard because it's almost like the reward for being aggressive is nowhere near the near the reward for just having a strong alliance. If you can have a strong alliance, then, you know, you can really have a strong game. And that's what we see these players down to do down doing on the West. But they are looking to get punished. You can see that at the moment, Don might be moving into a striking position. 126 elite horsemen. They've finally got their upgrades. Heading out across the map. Not a lot of walls at all for Vortex. It could be a target of his. Vortex is currently aggressing on his neighbor to the north. Someone who was once his ally and probably still is an ally. They've only got a, a little bit of a, a palisade wall between them. So perhaps he looks to go up there or perhaps he looks once again to defend against Vortex. We now see Vortex's landmark being destroyed. It's going to be that one again. The College of Artillery. Units all around this map. It's hard to keep track of where everything's going. More reinforcements coming through. Mangonel's doing what they do best and reproducing. More units in the base of Vortex. I... I, I think this is how horsemen are made right here. What you're... If, if you take an orange horseman and you mix it with a purple horseman, you get a what horseman? I think it's probably like a grey horseman, isn't it? It would be it would be a weird color. <laughs> Look what Don Artie said in chat. I'm riding along with anybody that shows up. And see that that's it. Like we we've just got to start. How, how do we motivate these guys to start hitting each other? How do we how do we mo motivate them to start doing this? I mean, we could go to the extent of, of banning alliances before the game, but then the problem is people are still going to make alliances before the game, and they're just not going to disclose it. It's just going to be, you know, Don Artie will message Marine Lord and be like, hey, let's not tell anybody that we're making an alliance. I know it's against the rules, but let's do it. Let's just not attack each other. We're not going to attack other people together, but we're going to not attack each other. If, we're, if we spawn next to each other, just wall up. And I, I'll ask in the game for help if I need it, and you do the same. Like that sort of thing. 
Southside under attack now. You can hear those emplacements firing off. Keep in mind, those those uh, cannon emplacements going to be doing a lot of damage here. Able to take out these horsemen. Very effective at dealing with them. But the horsemen are actually going to be coming in now. Vortex looking to take down landmarks. We've got one, two landmarks here getting taken out. Third line, landmark a little bit further away. It's that silver tree. Fourth landmark in the middle of the map. It's going to be the step out. He's getting attacked. It's going to be... Uh, Marine Lord here is pushing on this front as well. So it could be three landmarks that go down. Matt is going to be losing the first landmark, that white stupor. Second landmark getting repaired. He knows he's just going to fall back from this position. Does actually open up the backside though. Symptom is going to be uh, losing his Hussar Academy here. So not walling in all the way. Obviously, there was a, a little bit of a forest here before. They're going to be very happy, I suspect, Vortex, is that he finally gets to take down that landmark. It's been a long time coming, that's for sure. And Don Adi just riding to survive right now, you know. Bad boys for life, all that sort of stuff. Oh, oh, we got the trade ships out. Let's have a look and see what these guys get. That's a pretty decent trade. 113.56. It's not terrible. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's not terrible. It's probably about the best you could get in this game. Maybe from here. Oh, you, you know what? You can't trade there. Two Baoshans, one pond. Symptoms Landmark going down. Actually, that's not Symptoms Landmark. This is Symptoms Landmark. I don't know where he's losing landmarks. You know what would be cool? If the game had a different color notification for where the landmark went down. And it was like, enemy destroyed Matiz's landmark and it's in purple, so in Matiz's base. Or is it the step out in the middle? Oh my god, there's just landmarks dying everywhere. I can't keep up. Dinky King's losing landmarks to Don right now. I, I don't even know where to look, I'm sorry. There, there are landmarks everywhere. And now Don just going. Oh my god. Oh god, Don's doing it. Don's going for Vortex. Don pulling the trigger finally. 102 horsemen. He said he was just riding around looking for fun. It seems like he may have found it. Plenty of keeps at the back here. It looks like it might even be thoughts of a wonder here for Vortex. Don just... Where is Don going? Is Don doing this again for this? Don once again scouting with his army. He's just out here for the good times. But now the push really coming through. Symptom's second landmark has gone down. Let's check the landmark tracker. You can see he's on two. It's going to be that landmark down in the south that went down. First one. Second one. Nice and safe on the backside there. But he's losing more and more. Dome of the Faith did go down. Town center is here. So the push is definitely coming to shove. And Vortex actually holding on on this position. Don Artie found himself a nice little hidey hole at the back here. <laughs> Don just memeing. And just, just remember, guys, the reason why Don is memeing in this game, because he doesn't care. He's He knows he's already through to the grand finals because he's got that many points. He's so far ahead of everybody else on the points that he, he doesn't care. So he's just memeing at this point. He's just having fun. He, he's just here for the ride. He could pull out a big performance, but he's not stressed. He's having a good time. Looks like the, the Royal Cannon going to be going down. It's on four health. It's trying to stay alive. With that, that's going to be a third landmark that goes down. Spearman being created. It looks like, well, the, with the town center here, he's going to be able to rally villagers to the Hussar Academy and repair it. It's only going to be a matter of time, though. Trebuchet is coming out right now. Oh, that's a huge amount of trebuchet for Simtom. Remember that, that at, on one side, we've got the attack coming down against Simtom. But on the other side, the trebuchets unpacking. He's got one, two, three, four. Two more landmarks to go. Horseman going to be able to... Horseman! Trebuchets! Horseman! Trebuchets! Horseman! Trebuchets! He's not like this! He puts them all inside and he's like, all right, good job, guys. Everybody got inside. Unfortunately, we sank the boat. Uh... <laughs> Well, that was your one chance at, at defending the push against Vortex, I guess. And now it's all gone. The push for Vortex continues. Over on the east side, battles continue to unfold. We've got Puppy Paul pushing into the base of Marine Lord here. That was very painful to witness. Very painful to watch. Still just... Uh, this south side has just been so passive, it's insane. This is the biggest alliance we've ever seen, for sure. For sure, this is the biggest alliance we've ever seen. I'm confident there's one, two, three, four, five players in this alliance. Potentially even six that, that may have taken themselves out early on in the game just because of the proximity. 
it was it was a necessary matter that needed to be happened. Marine Lord manages to hold on. We're back over towards this east side, or rather west side, where definitely a decent battle is unfolding. I want to check in Symptom on his resources. He's got plenty of resources in the bank. Looking over at Vortex. A little bit lower for him. But he's obviously playing the French. Economy a bit better than the Delhi with that access to trade. Zebek in the water going to be picking off any reinforcements as they run by. Rewall coming up as well. Vortex looking good. Managing to hold on. Army starting to look good for Symptom. Donati still chilling out in the back of the base of his enemy. And the question is now, how long does this damn game go for? Because I'm sitting here at a minute, uh, an hour and 10 minutes. And I'm starting to think, well, hold on a minute. If there's still seven players in this game and we've got like an epic team game that's going on, but it's chaotic as hell. There is a risk that this game goes for three hours, four hours, five hours, potentially. And that could be an issue. <laughs> that could be an issue. Units continuing to get taken out over on this this little route through. Horseman with the cleanup. Vortex is building a wonder. Ladies and gentlemen, it is happening. The Notre Dame is coming down. There are seven people in this game alive right now, and Vortex is throwing down a wonder. And it's kind of why... Why is Vortex making a wonder? Wait, what? He's making a wonder, but he's got no resources. He's got 95 food in the bank. 49 villagers. Well, good luck to him. It's an interesting strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it plays out. I suspect it's not going to be too well. Because... I mean, the, the push on this front has completely stalled out. And now it's going to attract people towards his base. And before we had Symptom, who was already looking pretty decent. And now he's going to have a whole bunch of friends. Marine Lord's actually getting pushed back pretty hef heftily uh, over on this eastern side. And keep in mind, the whole time, Mattis is trading. So th this there could be a potential play at a second wonder as well. If you're a big brain thinker, you, you, drop, like a, you drop your own wonder. Oh, he, he repaired up the Hussar Academy. You drop down your own wonder here now because it, it's highly likely that this wonder is going to get taken out. Let's let's have a look at how Mattis is doing. Dude, I'm telling you, Mattis is in like a good position. The one thing he's missing though, at outpost. He's only got 42. Those are rookie numbers. You got to bump those numbers up. Notre Dame does go down. We'll get a little bit of a look at it and see what she looks like. The defense of Notre Dame. How will it hold on? That is the question. Because at the moment, my suspicion is it's not going to hold on that well. Vortex has barely a trash army to hold it all together. You can see he's got 151 population at the moment. No food in the bank. No gold in the bank. He's got a dream. That is it for Vortex. He just wants to keep himself alive. Let's see how he plays it out, though. I, I, I Honestly, if Vortex wins this with a wonder, I will be incredibly impressed. But with Vortex, I mean, the, the question is, how does he look to hold on? Because you can see Matiz is pushing up. Actually, I don't think... Yeah, Matiz will look to take him out. But now Matiz is, is pushing up here with Puppy Paw. So these two guys are working. And Simtom also. Don Arty doing Don Arty things. I think Don Arty's gone back to bed. So for anybody who doesn't know, Don Arty was, uh, well, let's just say he was having some quality time with a friend of his. And he, he sent me a message like, Drongo, I need you to, to, to call me when game number one finishes so that I can come to the computer and play. And I think he may have gone back to bed. I think that may be the case. Because he's just chilling at the moment. Just holding on. Guildhall still standing. Front of the base, under attack. Wonder might or might begin to go down. We can see villagers are going to be pulled out to repair Vortex. He's got 3k wood in the bank, more than enough. And it looks like Don Artie going to be unsuccessful with this cute little attempt here with the horseman. Oh, damn, Don. Damn. 
Ah. You almost had him, Don. You almost had him. You almost had him. I think he ran around the edges here. And Notre Dame is held. 500 wood down the down the drain. Not a bad attempt, Don, for a guy who's who's he's playing with negative 3 APM right now. Bush still coming strong. And it's looking like these southern guys are, are working better together. And interestingly, Dinky never actually got knocked out. Dinky stayed in the game. He made it alive. Dinky King's all the way back up to 103 villages as well. He's re rebuilt completely. Market trading as well. Look at the markets going just ham right now. 56 gold. It ain't much, but it's hard work. Rather honest work. Marine Lord loses a landmark. It's going to be over on that eastern side of his base. Still with three landmarks remaining. Main town center. Compound of the Defender and that Dome of the Faith. Players moving towards that base of Vortex. We'll check in with the Wonder Tracker and see how long it's got. 11 minutes and 40 seconds. Not long to go. But it might be 11 minutes too long. It's a slow and steady push. Vortex definitely... I, I feel like Vortex may have jumped the shark a little bit here. A little bit too early. Pulled the pin. Pulled the pin. I'm liking the push from the south, though. It's working well. And now we actually see some Fire Lancers entering the mix as well here for Dinky King. He's gone ham. He's dropped down a whole bunch of, uh, of economic buildings and now looking to pump out those units. Bombards on the south side, continuing to move up. Marine Lord on the north, looking to hold on a little bit longer. Unfortunately, playing the Delhi, it's going to be hard for him, though. Push over towards the south side for Vortex. Or rather, against Vortex. Simtom just doing a little bit of patrolling, a little bit of trading on the water. And at the same time, Puppy Poor as well as a Dinky King. Moving back in over on this east side. Marine Lord might be in trouble here. The battle begins. Abla Trier, Horseman. Horseman going to be doing a bit of screening. Spearman moving up towards the front as well. Fire Lance is going to be in on the back side. Looking to add into the mix a little bit of damage. Elephants looking strong. Pumping in that damage that the bombards or the cannons on the back are just doing so much work. Keep in mind, they're royal cannons as well. So they get 288 damage. He is popping off now. And Puppy Boy looking very good on the French right now. Dinky King going to be holding on as well. These two guys looking to work together to take out Marine Lord. Potentially looking to fight over that last wonder. The last landmark. Speaking of Wonder, we've, or Landmark, we've got Dinky King dropping down to Spirit Way. It's going to be taking him to the Ming Dynasty. He's going to unlock himself some Grenadiers and start getting serious about the late game. Cannons still moving forward. Things not looking good right now for Marine Lord. Not looking good for Vortex. They held it together early on and now Don Hardy. He's woken up. He said, you know what? I'm back from the bed. And I've decided I'm going to send my elite horseman out. Look at Don. He's not even attacking. He's just minding his own business. He's like a honey badger right now. He don't care. Don Hardy don't care. Huge battles just raging on. As the alliance from the south looks to take on the northerners. School of Cavalry going to be going down. Don Hardy looking to try and pick off some enemy landmarks here. We've got one landmark. Second landmark's already taken down. Third landmark has gone down. Now it's going to be that town center. Keep in mind, if this town center goes down, he's still got the guild hall remaining. Whether he finds it, that's another question. You know, Don likes to scout with his... Uh, he likes to scout with his army. So there is the potential. We see the main town center also going down here. For Marine Lord, he's got two landmarks that remain. The compound of the defender, the dome of the faith. Don Hardy takes out the main town center. He's taken out three. And Marine Lord is eliminated. He taps out. He says good game. So I suspect... That that's going to be three points going over towards Puppy Paw. Three points going over towards Dinky King for that kill there. We'll double check with our admin exactly what they think, but I suspect that's going to be the case. And with that, Marine Lord going to be leaving the game. So we'll make sure that we clean that one up so you guys don't have to see that anymore. But now Vortex's landmarks go down. And with that, it is going to be a good game. We can see that they do go down. I'm not sure exactly how they went down, uh, but I suspect uh, it was through the, through the gate. So the gate here, and with that, it looks like Simtom going to be able to clean up the points for that one as well. So all four landmarks going down. And now there were five. The Alliance, the largest alliance that ever lived.
All right. Well, Marine Lord gets knocked out. Unfortunate for him. He was looking good in the early game. The same for Vortex. Both players looking good in the early game. We saw these guys not look to aggress upon each other, but obviously realizing that the bigger threat at hand was that alliance down towards the south. It was a huge alliance, uh, and they've taken over the game completely. We don't really know who's actually in that alliance uh, or, or who's not, because it, it's hard to tell the difference between a person who's in an alliance and a person who's got the non-aggression pact. But where do they go from here? I wouldn't be I would be surprised now if we didn't see a wonder coming out immediately in this position because we've still got five people in this game. We'll do a bit of a stock take and see where players are up to. So Puppy Poor at the moment, he's sitting on a pretty decent economy. Next up, we've got Dinky King. Dinky King definitely a little bit behind when it comes to the resources. Don Artie, I mean he, he's been, he's just been doing his casual forty one villager uh, deli play that he loves to do. This is this is typical Don Artie. 94 horsemen in queue at the moment. Symptom, definitely one of the favorites in this late game, has begun to build a base over the entirety of this west side of the map. Now looking to even move out over into that northern position. And then, of course, we've got Matiz down towards the south, who's also in a really good spot as well. But he is lacking on the outpost. Remember, with the Mongols, your number one thing that you do is outpost spam. Outposts with cannon emplacements. That is all you want to do. All you want to make are outposts with cannon emplacements, and you want to make them everywhere. You want to dot the map completely with them. Dinky's landmark does go down, though. It's Don. Don's back. Don is back for the fourth time this game. Another landmark goes down. We'll ride on board with, with Don and see how he's doing. As he continues taking down landmarks, there's going to be two more landmarks that go down here. Look at the spirit. Oh my god, look at the spirit wave for Dinky. He extends himself out even further. He's got landmarks all over the map. Spirit way up towards the north. This makes it so hard to kill China. The fact that they can get to Imperial and they can delay. They can delay that last landmark. So they wait for someone to get killed and then go and build that landmark in the enemy's base. It's so smart. It means that they're always in the potential... Uh, potential running to win the game. Don now looking to take out more landmarks. So where do we go from here? I'm looking at the minimap trying to discern where we go from here. And Dinky once again cockroaching his way through. Knows he might be in trouble. There's a lot of units coming out from his enemy. Knights down towards the south. Looks like Matt is. Might be turning his attention towards Puppy Paw. Puppy Paw, we'll have a look and see. He's got, he's bringing the military back. College of Artillery safely on that backside as well. He's managed to repair the holes in his walls. Still got a bit of a hole there at the front. Making his way around the corner. So I, I, I still don't know what to think of this game and where to go from here. Because for me, this game will decide who goes through to the grand final for a lot of these players here. We know that Don Adi is already through. He's got enough points to get through. Other players that are through include Puppy Paul. Both of these guys are guaranteed to get through. So Dinky, Simpton, Matis, these are the, the guys that are fighting it out really here. Everyone else is just chilling at the moment. Remember that once the grand finals begin, points will reset back to zero. So they these guys, Puppy Paul and Don Adi, I mean, they're only getting, they're only collecting style points at the moment. Over on the east of the map. Don going to get chased away by, by a couple of lances. You know, Don loves to ride with people. He said it earlier. Emplacements continuing to, to bombard down. And Matt is just chilling. So we've seen two players to the north get knocked out. So it goes from seven down to five. But still, we don't really see... Th th this is just PvE. This is just people... All playing together, all being friends. Where do we go from here? Grenadiers moving forward. It's going to be Dinky King. And at, at, at this point, I can definitely say that I'm going to be looking at teams or, or teaming. The fact that the fact that we're getting alliances this big, it's it's definitely not something that I would like to see or support. Uh, so we might actually have to change up the rules on that. 
the reality is that people are still going to form alliances secretly, but perhaps that's probably the best way to go because the truth is, if we're getting alliances of five people all working together, I mean, the other alternative is that we look to deny points. Uh, if you... You know, I'm not going to tell people like, hey, you can't attack your... Or you, ha you have to attack your neighbor or stuff like that. But the reality is when you've got five people that are all in, a, in an alliance, no one's aggressive towards each other. Everyone's just booming. I mean, these guys are just saving for... At, at this point, these guys are saving for a house, it seems. But yeah, no indication. I don't think we've got a wonder at the moment yet. Yeah, so no wonder is up either uh, for anybody. And now we just, we enter into what is like a, I say a stalemate, but it's like, it's a stalemate, but we, we've lost chat. So we don't really know what these guys are saying to each other, but. Hmm. Interesting. I, I'm trying to think of ways that we've got, got to go around it or, or ways that we've got. I'm going to have to definitely brainstorm this one. Puppy Boy going to be losing his landmarks. It's going to be that uh, college of artillery on the south side. Loses it to a couple of bombards from Simpton. Simtom definitely seems to be aggressive here. Maybe we make it so that there's there's no alliances. Uh, and then or make it so that you cannot make alliances. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about it. Ma yeah, maybe we just make it so that there's no points for placing. So you don't get points for placing. You just get points for kills. And, and, and points for winning. And that's it. But then if you get points for winning, then is that still going to promote people to team up? Because if, if we do it that way, if we make it points for a kill, then that, that gives us action. Marine Lord actually in the chat right now saying it's impossible to fix, in my opinion. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's very difficult because there's a lot of people that will say, you know, just ban teaming. But the reality is, is you, you can't. Uh, and I've talked about this many a times before. You know, like, as an example, you see, like, up here towards the north, okay? So you can see when Marine Lord's base is so close to Vortex's base, all right? And there's no walls in between them. These guys, obviously, then they're, they're, they've agreed not to attack each other. So if this was a no-teaming game, I would call these guys out and say, you, you guys are teaming. What could they do to stop that? One of them walls along this axis and the other one walls right next to it? And now they both say, yeah, we're just being smart and not attacking each other. And, and how, do I, how do I say, oh, okay then. You know, like, where do, where do you draw the line? And by the same token, I don't want to be saying, okay, well, Don Artie, you literally spawned less than a screen away from, from the nearest player to you. You must attack him. Like, because then, that, well, well, what if that ruins, well, uh, like, that's going to ruin Don Artie's game. You know what I mean? So it becomes a very difficult problem to solve uh, in that regard. So look, we'll have to head back to the drawing board. We'll do a little bit of, of uh of brainstorming and try and work out some ways to shift it up because we will be heading into the final uh tomorrow it will be the 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 gr or the grand final there's gonna be three games points will be reset uh but this is not something that we want to have we want to have exciting games we don't want to have an alliance with this many people in it um so I i'm thinking of like uh Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. If, if you've got any suggestions, though, shoot them out to me. Whether that be on, on, on Twitter, YouTube comments, all that good stuff. I mean, by, by the time this goes up on YouTube, these games will have already already happened. But uh, Don Hardy looking to come down on, on Puppy Paw. Looking to push in. Not going to be able to achieve much. You guys know the French defense is very strong. Plenty of keeps back here as well. But Matty's going to be joining the party as well. I reckon right now Matty's kill count is probably on like seven. Like, M Matis has just been... For 90 minutes, Matis has just been chilling in his corner of the map. Just... Just... Stockpiling. That's that's it. That's what he's been doing. And, and that's not something that we want to see. And, you know, all credit to Matis for doing that because he's playing the game by the rules. And that's what it's all about. But now it looks like we might have another one going down. It's going to be Puppy Paw. Keep in mind our Chinese player who's got a landmark in this base. He's also got a landmark towards the north. So, if anything, Dinky King remains alive. Right, Oop. keeps going to be going down. Plenty of horsemen looking to defend. Matis's army actually looking decent. A lot of spears and hand cannoneers in here. Bombard's going to be able to dish out that DPS. There's 
the School of Cavalry, as well as the Town Center in here. No court architects through. Look at those bombards on the south side coming through for Symptom. The Town Center, I don't know whether this is the last landmark. We're going to have to quickly double check the Guild Hall over towards that west side. So even if this landmark d goes down, he's going to have one more. Main Town Center goes down. That's going to give him one final landmark. It's the Guild Hall. It's getting focused down as well. I don't know where it's getting focused down from, though. I just saw it lose a bunch of health, but I don't know from where. It might be from these Bombards. There's more Bombards rolling in as well. They're rolling through. You can see them. If he gets behind the wall, it could be terrible. Fortunately, comes around the wrong side of the wall. Fight continues over on that north side of the base. Most kills a minute could determine place. But then the problem is you've got two guys that are like, hey, let's just throw trash at each other for the entire, entire game. Like, you get what I mean? Like, as an example, like Marine Lord and, and, uh, and Vortex up here could have been like, okay, let's just throw trash at each other the entire game. Like, at the same time, we'll work to kill people. Or not work to kill people, but, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's an option. Puppy Paul, unfortunately, going to be losing his life here. And indeed, it is going to be Symptom looking to take this one down. He's got the Bombards on the backside. There is no contention coming in. Those points going to be going over towards him and Puppy Paul. Going to be losing his life in this game. And unfortunately for him, there is only four remaining. Now, do we dare see a wonder coming out? Now, for Matiz, he's got all the room for one, but unfortunately, he doesn't have a lot of outposts. And something we've talked about a lot in this game is that when it comes to Mongols, you want to be making those outposts. Now, I want to ride on board with Dinky and see how he's doing. His economy's really picked up. It's not looking terrible. There's not a lot of natural resources out on that map anymore. So it means that the prospects for a wonder, they grow slimmer. They grow dimmer. And once again, we see Don killing these two landmarks with all of his horsemen. Dinky looking to push in over towards Symptom's base. Remember, Symptom also has that landmark down towards the south. And the consequence of doing this is is that uh, even if you push in and even if you're able to, to take out the majority of your enemy, they're still able to stay alive exactly how Dinky King did it. You know, we saw Dinky King in the early game uh, able to stay alive just through the use of a landmark. So maybe we could even go to the extent of, um, you know, no landmarks in enemy or in, uh, in bases of of other players like if, if you want to place a landmark down it has to be in an uncontested area uh because then you know it, it makes it very difficult right like the, you know the, the same reason that we banned trading between players so as an example if you know if Simtom wanted to make a a market here and trade uh, all the way up here with with matt is hypothetically uh he's not allowed to do that that is banned uh from the game just simply because it creates uh it makes it too easy so maybe we could make it the same thing there that you can't put wonders in contested areas. But th then even even then, like, okay, you know, what's to stop Symptom from saying, well, this area down here next to Matiz is uncontested. I'm just going to go put my my landmark down there. It's it's not contested, right? Like, it, it becomes very difficult to draw a line. Matiz now still yet to, to push in. But it, lo it looks like the next person is is Dinky King, who's be he's being targeted down. He's doing a pretty decent push at the moment. He's got a long way to go. Town Center gets focused down. Bombards looking good. These are Chinese Bombards as well. Just remember that. I don't think they're Clock Tower. No, he's got one Clock Tower in there. And once again, Dinky King continues to rebuild his base. I love the way that he always rebuilds these bases. We hear someone leaving the game right there. Yeah, I, I think that, that that's definitely it. You're not allowed to build landmarks in, in a live player's bases. That's definitely going to be it. So that would mean in, in the early stages of the game, if, you, if you're if you getting taken out, you can't go and retreat to someone else's base and then build a landmark in there. But then, you know, to what extent do we call that? Do we say, you know, a person who's got a landmark, you know, hypothetically, it, we, we saw earlier, Crackety came out. He built his landmark uh, in, in the middle here. And the reason I'm not looking at uh, at 
uh, Dinky King's landmarks. He's got so many of them. It, it's not a real threat that he gets knocked out here. It, it's more of a discussion point, right? So if we were to say, you know, no landmarks, then Crackety can't go and build that landmark there. But can he just go build it in the back of this base over here? No, you know what? Probably not. Dinky looking pretty strong over here, actually. He's still got a pretty decent uh, base up towards the northern position as well. Town center is up here if he needs to rebuild economy. Losing a lot of his base on the south side here to Don for the fourth time this game. And we don't see any wonders at this point. Four players remain for these. Don, Symptom, Matos, Ma Matos, Matiz rather, and Dinky King. Plenty of damage coming out. Grenadiers doing what they do best. Look at that AOE coming out. And Don once again heading to them. Honestly, Don might be a bit of a, a part of the problem for this game specifically because he's not be he's not doing anything. Like he's literally just sitting there twiddling his thumbs. He could be killing people. He could be making moves, but he's not. And so I, I feel like to an extent, Don is to blame for this game. Thanks, Don. But no seriousness though. Uh, you know, Don could have definitely been a little bit more active. Don once again over on this east side. Still, people don't know about this landmark up towards the north. And you can see Dinky's come in. He's repairing his Great Wall Gatehouse. And this is just the classic Chinese cockroach, right? Like, th there's nothing that you can do to stop him. He's a mad, menacing menace. Pushing through the base of Symptom now. Definitely cleaning it up. If there's anybody who's, who's under threat here, it's going to be Symptom. The numbers here just looking way too good for Dinky. Where is Symptom? Where is his army? He's on 180 at the moment. You can see the extent that he's going to to protect this. But remember that this is just going to delay the inevitable. These outposts here, they've all got the emplacements on them. But unfortunately, they're all outranged by the bombards. It looks like Don might finally be under attack. He's going to be matches on the south side. He's got that palace of the Sultan right there ready for the taking. Don just chilling for the moment, heading up towards the north. Seems I'm in trouble, I think. Perhaps making the FFA's 300 pop would allow players to snowball harder and speed the game up. Uh, I don't know about the stability. That, that's going to be the main thing. Is I, Ideally, we want to go for like the most stable games. The 300 pop mod works pretty well, but we've had issues in the past where players uh, disconnect just because I don't know whether their PCs overload or exactly what the story is, but we've had a lot of disconnects in the late game uh, from games where there's been a lot of units out. I remember one in particular where we had like 350 outposts and the player disconnected uh, just because there were so many units. Nice little hold from there. He's going to continue pushing through. He'll be fine. Don't know where these bombards are going. Dinky King's landmark gets destroyed up towards the north. That's a good sign, actually. How many landmarks is he on? That's one landmark remaining for Dinky King. And of course, it's the Great Wall Gatehouse that he manages to repair with those five villages. But look, the bombards are moving. Symptom might be moving with the bombards towards that position. You can see how much of a cockroach he is. Alright, we'll, we'll do our best to solve it. We'll try and work it out. Until then, Don just going to be chilling out for the moment. Bombard's moving through, but unfortunately ignoring... Wait, is that... Is he... He's getting... His bombards are getting taken out by Matiz's bombards. Oh my god, look, he, he knows, he sees. One landmark remains still, still for him. Symptom on two. Something's taking them out. It's the cannon emplacement. 
The cannon in place from, from Matt Tiz is taking out the bombards. Oh my lord. Grenadiers just looking good, picking up all those reinforcements, still pushing through. So Dinky King probably just going to get knocked out here. I, I love that we've got a race on both sides of the map here. That Simtom's actually going to be taking out Dinky King. Unless he's repaired another one. I, I know he's repairing it somewhere. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. There it is. Where are the other ones, Dinky? Is that it? Is that it? Is this the last landmark? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. We're 100 minutes into this game. I don't believe it. There's got to be another one somewhere. There's got to be another one somewhere. That surely isn't it. That surely isn't our Chinese player getting ta tapped out right now. It was. It was. Dinky King goes down. Symptom going to be able to take him out. Going to be able to hold on for dear life. And you can see how damn close he was to it as well. He was working his way through. I, I like that the, uh, the, the bombards from Dinky King kill the keep. Even though they're dead, they're like, fuck you in particular. Now, remember that there was always this landmark down towards the south. So there was never a real threat that Simtom was ever going to be killed here by Dinky. And that, I, I think that's definitely part of the problem, right? Is that, that it, it makes it almost impossible for you to kill people. But now we've got those three people back. Don Artie still just running around in circles here. And I think that, 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 that complicates things, right? When, when Don's doing it. He's lost most of his base. But the landmarks still remain. Sacred Sides being captured up in the middle. Matiz could actually kill Symptom. That's a good point. He's got the landmark down here. Relics have been dropped on the map as well. You can see them. He's got this one up towards the north. Landmark tracker at the moment. Don Adi on four. Symptom on two. Matiz on four. Marine Lord on two as well. But that's obviously because he was dead. Uh, when he surrendered, it, it shows that he's got two. But now we hear Sacred Sites being captured. There's obviously this Sacred Site over towards the, the east side as well. And where do we go from here? As it looks like looks like Matiz is actually going to be cleaning up landmarks. He's, we might have ourselves a game here. So Matiz was somebody that we called out in the beginning of the game saying he's got a really good position. Look at the economy here. This is ludicrous. So it's going to be one, two. Final landmark over here towards the west. It's actually not the final. It's the second last one. A few more attacks coming through. Matt is decent amount of outposts out here. Walla, 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 walla. He's going to be picking up the Grenadiers. We are going to be seeing some Delhi Grenadiers coming out right now for Symptom. This, this is the Delhi, the strongest they will ever be. The Delhi will never be stronger than this. In Age of Empires 4. It's when they wallow all the Chinese units. That is it. You can't get stronger Delhi than that. Delhi Grenadiers? You know that's going on the thumbnail, right? Oh my god, Delhi Grenadiers? That's actually a pretty smart move. Don Artie just doing a run around. He spent an hour and 43 minutes running horsemen around in circles for style points. That is it. All he's been doing is just getting style points. And it pains me to see. Last landmark. Compound of the defender. Matt is going to be working towards it. Don setting himself on hold position. You can see them all dropping their staffs instead of keeping them up. And all of the... This is actually going to give Matiz a huge amount of stone in here. But now both players looking to hunt for those landmarks. I think Simtom realizes that Matiz may be a threat here. Forces him back. Those Grenadiers going to be living to see another day. And the final landmark for Don Arty goes down. And then there were two. So will we dare see a wonder now? Matiz, who has enough to place. How many wonders do you have enough to place, Matthias? Let's have a look and see. Matthias has enough resources to place. One, two, three, four.
four wonders. Technically, he could almost place a fifth wonder as well if he did a bit of market trading. And he still hasn't placed a wonder. That is, you gotta place wonders, bro. Oh my lord, dude. It's kind of wild. Symptom on the other side. I mean, he, he is leaking hard. There is not a lot of resources in here. Matt is definitely looking like the, 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 the strong player in the late game now. He's going to continue push, pushing forward. A lot of bombards here. Poor Donati. Rest in peace, Don. Is it, there is the potential for a... The, there's no landmark snipe coming through. Or at least he wants to make sure that there's no landmark snipe coming through. As now the... The, the fight has begun. Keep in mind, Symptom's landmark is on the backside here. So he's going to be able to take that one down pretty safely. Other one up towards that western side. All the rest of the base for Symptom, though, cleaned up completely. Grenadiers remain. And where does the battle turn? I mean, for Matis now, it's just all going to be about 8 p.m. For him, he should just be in complete control of this game. Bringing up the villagers. You know, for, for him, the key factor here is bringing up these villagers and more than this. Like, he's got 59 villagers. Bring 30 villagers to the front. You're dropping down barracks, stables, archery ranges, siege workshops, whatever it is you want. You're just dropping them down. You need to get them outside your enemy base right now. At the same time behind it, you're doing a great job cleaning up this. Keep on, keep it on, keeping on. Where are the landmarks for Matias, though? Let's check. Silver tree. Finally, it gets put down. We do see the monument of the Great Khan. It is going to be coming up. And with this, a very hard position for Simtom to actually take. Simtom known for trying his best in these situations. Known not to give up without, an, without a, a, a good fight. And we can see what he's thinking about as well. Simtom now looking to wall up over on this eastern side. Potentially, we do see the, uh, the villager there starting down an outpost. There'll be walls up shortly. Do not worry. But you can see how hard it's going to be for him to hold this sacred site over here. If, even if he walls this up... Yeah, you can defend these two sacred sites in the middle, but all Symptom does, or rather all Matiz does, is walks a couple units over here. Boom. Takes it out. Monument of the Great Khan is complete. At an hour and 47 minutes into this game, we see our first wonder being dropped down for Matiz. Definitely playing the safe game, the late game. We see the outpost pushing out. He's also got a decent push going through on this, this north side. Manages to take out the Hussar Academy. It's going to be that landmark. Landmark number one. Landmark number two remains over towards that west side. But the remnants of the base of Simtom are still very obvious. Dome of the Faith is down. Recently killed. Main Town Center is down. A single landmark remains for Matthias to take out to win the game. But I don't think he knows where it is. If he knew where it is, he'd probably be going there. The way that uh, the way that Simtom is defending makes you think that that he's defending like the, the landmark is up towards the north somewhere. Now the one thing I've, I've got to be scared of, if I'm Matthias right now, is a snipe. So when it comes to his landmarks, one. Two, three, four. But you know what? Cannon emplacement outposts are so strong that I don't think it matters. They will always be able to overwhelm. Horseman looking to fight off against Horseman. I can't believe that uh, a Delhi player made it all the way to the final two. The question was whether a Delhi player would make it to the final three, and indeed they did. Indeed, they did. Two of them made it to the final three. So that's got to be double points for sure. But at this point, Matt is... No scouting information. He's got no idea where his enemy is. You can see him pushing up here towards the north. Where is that last landmark? That's what he cares about. That's what he needs to know. He's taking out this one down towards the south. And now looking to pick off a lot of these units. Horsemen moving out. Focusing down the bombards. One of the Bombards goes down. Second one going down as well. Third and fourth going down e equally at the same time. And Sacred Sites are now being captured as well. So Simtom going a little bit ahead. 
Wonder Tracker at 12 minutes and 27. Sacred Sight already gets capped in the middle. So the, probably the hardest one was capped first. The closest one. Let's go with that. The closest one was capped first. He's looking to take this one over towards the east as well. But even then, Matiz will know. He will be ready. And now Matiz just holds on with that wonder. With that monument of the Great Khan. Now there's always the potential that, that his enemy just comes in and burns it down. And then we're back to we're back to square one here. But there are a lot of points on the line right now if you can kill your enemy. If you can kill your enemy, we're talking about not just 15 points for the win, but six points for the kill as well, which means 21 points compared to seven points if you place as second. So there's a big difference between those two. And that is right now with resources for absolutely days. The ability to just keep pumping out units. And, you know, something that we talked about a little bit earlier, the fact that Matt is hadn't brought up those villages, hadn't looked to build up a forward base. To me, it, it shows maybe n not a sign of, of a, a bit of a, a lack of confidence here. He's in, he's in the driving position. Now, obviously, we've got God mode. We can see everything. We know the, the reality here that Symptom is not in a good spot. But Matt is almost double the score of Symptom. He's easily able to overwhelm him. It's just going to be about consistency. Manages to clean up majority of this stuff down to the south. It's going to be hard to clean it all up. You can see those bombards rolling out as well. Sacred Sight once again getting captured in the middle. More units coming down. I can definitely feel a wonder snipe coming on though. I don't know about you guys. I've got a suspicion this game is going to go long. It's at two hours right now. Even though Matiz is in the driving seat, I feel like he doesn't know how to he doesn't know how to finish this game. Like he's got he's got the monument of the Great Khan. But even then. Now, remember another thing is if if he wins with the monument of the Great Khan, a little bit of lag right there. He's not necessarily going to get the kill points for Simtom. So that's a big factor as well. He's got to make sure that he's actually in a position to kill Simtom. He just cuz he hasn't done that. So Simtom may survive all the way to the end. And then the the points, obviously the, the kill points don't go through then because Simtom survives all the way to the end. But even if Simtom was to surrender against that, actually, you know what? Well, I, I'll think about that one. T j ignore what I just said. Never mind me. Nice little cleanup. Bombards fighting up against emplacement outposts. No walls yet over on this eastern side. The battle's still raging on in the middle. I want to ride on board with Matthias and see what he sees. Oh my lord, I should not have done that. Oh my god, my game almost died. So where are Matthias' economic units here? He's got 27 of them. He's gathering food under the town center. And now finally moving out villages. He's actually just going to be dropping down outposts here instead. Uh, so not looking to get too aggressive. It's very curious to me that he, he's not... I mean, he hasn't scouted out this west side. But, like... Nice little conversion here. More Grenadiers coming in for our Delhi player. Simtom going to be picking up his second round of, of Grenadiers. Immediately drawing attention of Matthews over towards that position as well. Grenadiers coming out in number today. Oh, there we go. We're back. Not, not too bad trade chips. 142. But the numbers here looking good for him. We check in with Symptom, see where he's at. He's 200, 200, but no, ab absolutely no, uh, no economy behind it. He's got 96 villagers at the moment. So not a huge amount. We'll check in on the wonder timer. See how we've got eight minutes to go. We see outposts coming up though. I suspect we'll be seeing plenty of emplacements coming through shortly for Matthias. He's got 11,000 stone in the bank. That is that is a lot of emplacement outposts. That is like, what, 30, 40? Probably, yeah, 40. Or maybe like 30, 36, 37. Bombard's focusing down all those tower elephants. Doing a decent job here. Holding on. He's got to be careful. A lot of horsemen coming out. Spearmen a little bit too far away. They're going to be moving in. They've got the, the Yam Aura. He wants to stop this push from coming in. 
Hand cannoneers need to focus down the elephants. Spearmen need to focus down those elite knights. Or elite lancers, rather. And unfortunately, it looks like a lot of that siege is going to be going down. So a good little cleanup there for Simtom. He's going to be very happy with that. And once again, the consequence of Matt is not bringing up those forces to the front line. I mean, he, the, the, the thing is, and I, I'm not sure if Matt is realizes this. Yeah, he can win, but he could also get six points if he's able to kill Symptom. And it, it feels like he doesn't really want to kill him. He's just like, oh, I just want to survive. I'll, I'll push over to his base. I don't want to actually kill him, though. Symptom getting 142 for his trade route. Matt is no trade route, despite having the silver tree. In fact, I don't even think I've seen Matty's trade at all this game. Did we? I think maybe we saw a couple of traders out, actually. Yeah, we did. We did. We did. I know that we did because I remember seeing a Mongol trader. Back towards the choke point, though. More units coming out. Look at the expansion that's coming. Simtom drops a town center on the other side. In Vortex's base. Kind of wild. Now he's got, he's got two of the sacred sites. Doesn't have the third. This villager, it, it has been running back and forth. Is this villager on patrol? What is this villager doing? Is it farming? What is this villager doing? I know that, I know that there's a game going on, but I need to know about the villager. What is he doing? Oh, he is farming. Look at that. He's got a single farm and he's just still farming his life away. You get it, fella. Look at him go. Get it, girlfriend. Takes it all the way back to the town center that was once his and then returns. It ain't much. But it's honest work. Very true. Push through. Still, he doesn't know. Imagine if, like, if three scouts came through looking for the landmark. So, Symptom is incentivized to stay alive as long as possible because then he gets two points for surviving. And Matt is, 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 is incentivized to kill Symptom here because it's six points that he could be awarded. But unfortunately, it looks like the Wonder Tracker is going to continue ticking. And it's going to make it even more difficult for Symptom to pull out a victory here. I've said it before, and I will say it again. I think it's highly likely that, that this landmark gets sniped out. It seems exposed as all heck. It's kind of in the front of the base as well, but I guess at the time that he built it, it was technically in the middle of the base. You know, it was it was in a kind of safe spot. But Matt is looking good here. Cleaning up the production. Forcing him off, off this edge, off this little what? What is this, like a peninsula over here? Forcing him off it. But once again, we, we, we talked about it before. It, it's, it's fighting, but not really for the sake of a goal. He's just fighting for the sake of fighting. Continuing to push up. Right on board with Symptom and see how he's doing. Reinforcements at the moment. He's, he's trying to hold on to this position as, as hard as he can. But now those, those hand cannoneers... They're just chilling out for the moment. Manganel is actually going to be behind the walls. They'll be able to hold that push. D don't tell me Matiz dares go back, goes towards that direction. Is Matiz just going to hang out down on his side? L let this be a lesson to all aspiring FFA players. You want to scout your enemy and you want to find out where are their landmarks. You don't want to... F yeah, yeah, he... Th there, there you go. All right, all right. Okay, we found it. We did the classic Don Artie scouting strategy. We know where it is. Okay. All right. Come on. None of that. None of that fighting over there nonsense. Let's move. Everybody over. Now Simtop might be under some serious threat. We've got three, mi three minutes until one to defeat. And now the question is going to be whether Matt is actually able to kill Simtom. Matt is going to be turning his attention towards the town center. One landmark is killed. Second landmark was rebuilt. Third landmark is dead. It's the Dome of the Faith. And the fourth one that remains, the compound of the Defender on the back of the base. Still standing strong, but now we know where they are. 
Remember, all you need to do is take out these bombards. Symptom wants to make sure that he survives this game because he gets those extra points that might guarantee his chance to go into the finals, into the grand finals. You see that landmark once again going down. Now those bombards moving forward. Symptom could come in for a snipe as well. He's just going to go for a, a, an alternative attack. Two minutes until one to defeat. Those bombards moving forward. And this is where it gets really hard. Because those bombards have got the same range as the outpost. So you got to be careful. You've got to send like a, a unit or two ahead so that they don't take damage. Because you can see the bombards do take a fair bit of damage here. Now they're actually just going to move in. All of the bombards now starting to get fired upon by the outpost. Not sure what the intention is here from Matt is. Just looking to tank up a little bit of the damage. Bombards are all just selected to, to target individual buildings. And now coming through. Symptom going to be moving back. It's his last landmark that remains. We'll ride on board and check. He's got one landmark. That is it. The question is going to be whether he can hold out. We'll check on the Wonder Tracker and see where it's at. A minute and 17. He needs to get through the wall. And then he needs to take down the compound of the defender. There doesn't seem to be any army out for Symptom at the moment to look to try and take this down. One minute until one to defeat. It looks like he might get this one early. I don't think Symptom's going to be able to take down the Bombards. And with that, our two-hour game will come to a close. Your victor here will be Matthias. He will secure up 21 points with this victory. 15 points for the victory and 6 points for the kill on Symptom if he gets it. In the middle of the map, more units rallying. I suspect there was an attempt on this Monument of the Great Khan, but as I mentioned before, you can see the, the trebuchets down here. There's no real chance of it going down. And even then, back towards this side, it's all just a distraction for the reality of the compound of the defender losing its life. Mangonels did eventually make their way forward, but unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. I like how methodical he's being here. Instead of focusing down the combat of the defender, which he could very easily do. And remember... Uh, match complete. I, now, I, I don't know if... I don't know if that was a wonder victory, and I, or I don't know if Symptom surrendered. It says Symptom has been eliminated. So I'm going to assume that Symptom didn't surrender. That Symptom... At the end there, was alive. And as a result, he gets the two extra points. 15 points going to be going over towards Matthias. Six points not going to be awarded to him for that kill on Symptom because he spent too long killing the outpost. So unfortunate there for him. Let's talk a little bit about this game. Let's talk a little bit about the direction here that we want to go. That was it. That game, that's not what we want to see. That was a massive alliance. Uh, and it wasn't fun. I didn't enjoy it. And I'm sure you probably could have told from my casting that wasn't fun at all for me. So we want to stamp this out. We want to stop it. And I'm going to make sure that the grand finals for the Outback Octagon are the best games of this event.